Hey guys, it's Tom Box here. Welcome to uh, Monday's Storytime. It's been a while since we had another episode of this MST. Thanks for the acronym, guys. I must be blind as a bat since I didn't see it for the longest time until you guys pointed it out. But today's episode, we're going to be doing Ruling Nightmares. And it seems like people that always get featured in these stories seem to be a little bit illiterate now. According to US literacy rates, 21% of US adults read below the fifth grade level, and 70% of inmates in American prisons can not read above a fourth grade level. It seems like if you can't play Yu-Gi-Oh, you're likely gonna go to jail. Jump to conclusion, but hey, who cares? So, this episode, we don't have Bonesy, but it seems like we found Bonesy 2.0 across the globe. And this is gonna be pretty exciting. Most of these stories were submitted on my Discord by my Discord members. So thank you guys. And maybe if you guys submit your stories there, maybe I'll feature it in the future as well. But these ones are pretty damn exciting. I, I handpicked these ones myself. Our first story is the Flaming Dumpster Salad. This story is by Striker1995. I took the liberty of editing and proofreading this one and connecting the dots as I think you type this on your mobile phone and those mistakes show. Anyways, here we go. Another weird moment happened recently. I was judging my locals and recording some videos and I overheard someone say Boral Sword Effect Target Saryuja to attack again. Opponent. Oh, Yuja can't be changed to defense, Salad Player. Oh, it doesn't have to. And uh, this was like a red flag immediately. We know where this is going. So the getting continues along and a salad player straight up just lied about Salamangrid Sanctuary and Mole. So we got to a play where our trusty salad player decided to go red reboot on his opponent's paleo deck. And wow, a solid free turn. That seems pretty good. And then he links off his Sunlight Wolf into a Heat Leo. Our salad player goes... I'll spin the back row, and then I'm going to use Sanctuary to make another Heat Leo, and uh, spin some more. Sanctuary make third Heat Leo, and spin another card. Now I'm going to use Small's Effect, put five cards back, including the two Heat Leo, and now I'm going to draw two cards. Now he continues his play by making a fourth and fifth Leo with the same Sanctuary. Oh my god, wow, he literally got wrecked illegally well then i come over to see this and i asked what happened i nearly died laughing because he said that oh it's an accepted game state and he's right and uh but all of it was just horrific cheating <laughs> bonesy did you just travel to another locals oh it seems like we found bonesy's long lost brother spreading the joys of removing any unnecessary text to unlock the card's true potential. Now jokes aside, the cheater should definitely be penalized for this. There's no such thing as an accepted game state if all the plays are basically illegal. And there's even some degree that you could say that both players can be penalized for, you know, not maintaining uh, procedure, like procedural error minor for both of them, or major. I don't, I, I, I don't know when someone just straight up cheats like that. It's pretty crazy. And also, hash zero isn't a number. This happened the week Dark Neostorm was released. Our first locals with the cards, and I know Mystic Mine is going to be heavily played and my cheap locals. So the tournament began, and the first player I match up with is Jason, not real name. And I've never really talked with Jason, and he doesn't really hang out with anyone at Locals. Just another player. I won the die roll and went first. I was playing Danger Thunder, but I literally bricked. Like two Chaos Dragons, one White Dragon, a Phantasme, and a Thunder Dragon Roar. Nothing I can activate. Okay, a pass turn. What, really? Yeah, I, I bricked hard. Okay then, my turn. Jason drew for turn, and he starts off with Pot of Extravagance to draw two cards. Now, I thought he was playing sub terrors at the time, and then he activated Mystic Mine. Oh, great, Mystic Mine deck. So, what's the problem? Oh, nothing. It's just a really freaking annoying card. Play a better deck then. Well, that explains why he's a loner at Locals. He proceeds to set 5 and pass. In hindsight, those cards were Secret Barrel, Ring of Destruction, Ojama Trio, Just Desserts, and Accumulated Fortune. And then the end phase. Okay, pass turn. Okay, so your Mystic Mine activates. No, it doesn't. It doesn't have an activated effect. Uh, yes, it does. When you and I have the same amount of monsters on the field, it destroys itself. Well, I don't have any monster, and zero isn't a number. So, since both you and I don't have monsters, we can't compare if we have the same amount. Um, if you have zero and I have zero, we both have zero monsters. Nope, not not that doesn't 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 work. Stop trying to cheat. 
So our local ruling judge comes over. What's wrong, guys? I keep telling OP that my card doesn't activate because we both don't have monsters on the field. You have both zero monsters. It activates. It's going to the grave. Zero isn't a number you can count. Um, okay. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Oh, seems like I just counted it. And Jason puts his Mystic Mind into the graveyard. Next, <laughs> next turn, I drew Dark Refer. I tossed the Dror into the graveyard, with, and with a White Dragon, basically he just got OTK. No guys, zero is definitely not a number, it's a concept, and the same concept as how many friends Jason has at this locals. And for our last viewer submitted stories, we have Phantas Mayhem. Okay, so a month or so ago, I visited a locals further away from my usual spot because my locals was closed for renovations from a recent water pipe leak. So at this other locals, I visited this place like a couple times before, there was Tony and Steve. Is this like Iron Man and Captain America references? Okay, so anyways, uh, Tony was uh, one of those rich kids, gold chains and flexing sneakers, and keeps talking about cards coming in from Europe. Yeah, rich kid, sounds like an Iron Man. After seeing him play, however, let's be real here, he's not very good. Now, apparently this week, Tony's cards arrived from Europe, and they were in Italian. Ooh, translations. And uh, our story begins here. Now, Steve was playing Crusadia Guard Dragon. He sets up a bunch of Guard Dragon links at some point in the combo where there's Saryuja and Pisty and all of them on the field. Now, this was the golden moment Tony was waiting for. He proceeded to activate his Italian Phantasme. Activate Phantasme? <laughs> what? Why did you activate it earlier? So I can draw more. And then Tony proceeds to draw three cards and he put one back. Yes, just one. Oh my god, Phantasme is so broken. The pros play it because it's so broken. Is, is that what he does? Yeah, everyone does it. You just draw up to the number of Link monsters plus one and then you put one back. That's why all the pros play it. And in, in the, what? <laughs> in context of one Link monster perhaps, but like there was two. <laughs> Anyways. What, Yu-Gi-Oh is such a pay to win game. It's so stupid. Oh, when you got it, you got it. <laughs> what? Okay, so Steve proceeds to link into Agrapaint, and then Tony, Chain, second Phantasme, draw three, put one back. Oh, sh of course you have a second one. Well, I drew it from the first one. I activate Agrapaint, nope, activate Impermanence. Oh, this Impermanence was in English. You gotta pay big money to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Now, Steve caught on to this one, though. Wait, you can't do that. Well, then why do people side impermanence when they go second? It's cause you don't have any monsters and you clearly do. Well I didn't know that. Do you even read your own cards? Of course I do. Do you see, see here it says you can activate this card from your hand. Read the rest of it if you control no cards. How was I supposed to know that? By reading the whole thing. So this is the part where I step in and I accidentally stirred some chaos. I mean, truth. Uh, a Phantasma is actually once per turn and you put back the same number of uh, cards as Link monsters and so it's only ever a plus one. And then they just start yelling at each other and start calling Tony a cheater. Tony gets a game loss for basically being illiterate with his own cards. Remember kids, when your opponent doesn't read your cards, you can just make up whatever effect you need and it will be okay. This is a textbook case of don't take your opponent's word for it. And if you subscribe to MST.TV, you will get a plus one to your skill of see through your opponent's lies. And it will be added to your hotbar. Now, and a side note, why doesn't this kid have a translation? I think the most logical response would be that, I guess getting a translation for that phantasma means getting a four Fourth copy of Phantasme means shelling out more money. But hey, this guy's like Iron Man, seems like he's getting all the money anyways, so he could definitely fork out to get another copy. 
Hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode of Monday Storytime. If you guys enjoyed this video, smash that thumbs up button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and notification bell. Because if you don't, I know that you guys don't think zero is a number. Or perhaps you're Bonesy's long lost brother. Or you didn't realize I already activated the subscribe card. And you have to do it now because it's plus one to subscriber. Anyways, enough of that joke. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please drop us a like so we know we are doing a good job. And you can also subscribe to MSD.TV for more fantastic videos by clicking on the button on the left. Don't forget to check out our partners at Imperium Duelist. They make really high quality mats, including some of my own limited edition release stuff. And if you want to check out one of our past videos, click here on the right. As always, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV and I'll see you next time.